Welcome to a new episode of The After Show, where I review a movie right after I see it. Um, we basically got two videos here, so um, yeah, I'll just do this into two parts. But basically we got uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2 and Maleficent. So um, yeah, we're going to basically start off with um, the one... I, I Basically what I did was, I went to the movie theater and I saw a double feature. I saw two movies and I saw those two movies and uh, whatever. So uh, we'll start off with the one I saw first, which is The Amazing Spider-Man. Um, so, just to clarify, um, I guess I'll talk about the first four movies before I get started. Um, I did actually do a review of The Amazing Spider-Man, so I'll put a link in there. I did it with Brad Dunn, it was a double feature review, and it was pretty raw, but I'll probably talk about the the movie more in a bit, a bit better, because I've kind of given it some time. Uh, so yeah, Spider-Man 1, or the Spider-Man trilogy by Sam Raimi, so Spider-Man 1... Um, I like it. I remember seeing it, and I really liked it. Um, it was fun, dandy. First introduction to Spider-Man, basically. I was always a Batman fan. I still am a Batman fan. Um, I mean, I like a few things about it. You know, Willem Dafoe is a great Green Goblin. Um, the origin story is okay. Um, you know, James Franco and... James Franco actually is a really good Norman Osborn. And, you know, Christian Stewart is Mary Jane and so on. But it's a fun little beginning to the first Spider-Man series. And uh, I'd give it about yeah, seven, basically. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I mean, I do, I will admit with, like, the new ones and with the old ones and the new ones, the old ones are a lot more campy. But that's probably because of the, of the director Sam Raimi, because of Evil Dead. He likes to put that little slapstick humor and so on in there. The goleming with, um... Uh, Norman Osborn or uh, Willem Dafoe, um, that's a little funny. That's actually really funny because you can see, like, well, that movie came out in what, like 2002? So it was right when Two Towers was coming out, so it was almost like there was a kingship, like Gollum and Green Goblin, you could just see them arguing, it's like, we kill some, no, we kill some, blah, blah, blah. Um, but yeah, I mean, and I mean, Tobey Maguire, I, um, I, I liked it first, but then you look back, then you watch the new ones, Tommy McGuire's a fucking wimp. I'm sorry. He's just a complete crybaby, basically. You, you can make any joke about Uncle Ben, you'd be like, <laughs> and he's doing that in every fucking scene. Um, but yeah, Spider-Man 1, I like. I really like, and I like, uh, and it's, it's a good start to the series. Spider-Man 2, I like a lot better than the first one. Um, I thought, like most people, it was better than the first one. Uh, I love the villain, Doc Oc Dr. Octopus. Um, the stakes are a little bit higher, um, and you've got, like, um, it's a, you got a bit more higher budget than the first one. It looks a lot better, like, it's a lot bigger than the first one. The train sequence, I absolutely love. That was a really fun scene. Um, I remember Lego doing the whole thing on that, but I digress. Um, I mean, yeah, the stakes are higher. Um, you got Doc Ock and the whole villain thing and just, um, the tentacles and everything, whatever. Um, I liked how, um, the, it kind of ends on a cliffhanger with, um, Harry Osborn, uh, finding out who Peter, who Spider-Man is, and then that little quick shock of, like, Willem Dafoe in the mirror and then finding the Green Goblin stuff, and that kind of left it open, and I really liked that. Um, but yeah, I felt it was a great addition, a second, it was a great sequel, um, way better than the first one, and, uh, yeah, Spider-Man 3, uh, I'd give that a solid maybe 8 out of 10, it was, it's actually pretty good, if they re-release it, I wouldn't be surprised, and that would be amazing, um, so moving on, uh, Spider-Man 3, it's, it's fucking shit, it's horrible, it's a horrible piece of shit, I did not like it first time around, it's just... It was so... It felt rushed. It felt really, really rushed, and there were a lot of producer-director arguments. You And it clearly shows that they wanted, like, the director wanted one thing, but the producer says, no, you have to have this thing, or else we'd fire you and shit. And, um, I, I did feel it was rushed. Venom was totally wasted. Um, 
It, it, he didn't even need to be in this movie, honestly. Like, they just slammed him in at the last minute just to get more toys and shit in. Peter Parker is at his worst here. He That whole dance scene, ugh, everybody's commented on it. I hate it. Um, I mean, I like how, like, James Franco is, like, the new goblin, basically. I, I mean, I could have gone if he was the hobgoblin. That would have been cool um, to see that happen. Uh, Sandman's actually I, is the only good villain in this movie. Um, and I thought that was cool. Uh, Mary Jane is always the damsel in distress, and that's the one thing I can't stand, is that they're always the one... She's always ha She always has to be saved. She can't do shit, basically, without Spider-Man. Um, I felt also, like, the, the old ones, I like how they filmed them in New York and shit. It was really well photographed in the first three movies, because it was New York, basically, and other places. Um, but yeah, Spider-Man, so overall, Spider-Man 3 is the worst of the tril of the original trilogy. It's a piece of shit, it's rushed, it's lazy, it's stupid, I just don't like it whatsoever, and I felt it was a complete waste of time. Now, a lot of, now, a lot of people have covered about when Spider-Man 4 was in production, when Sam Raimi was involved, I think he wanted to do The Vulture, I believe, with John Malkovich, and, uh, you know, The Lizard was in there too. But, you know, there was also, the producer said, no, you have to have this and this and this and this. And Sam Raimi just said, fuck it, I'm not doing it. You guys are just going to interfere with the whole with my kind of project. So they just went in and said, look, we're rebooting it now. So now we have, then we had, what we got was The Amazing Spider-Man. And just a quick recap from my review. Um, I really liked the reboot. Um, I felt it was a lot better than the, it made the first three look very cartoonish. And this one was a lot more darker and a lot more serious. I like the lizard design, though I wish he had more of a T-Rex head. Um, I felt Andrew Garfield is honestly the best Spider-Man I've seen. I love how he's a smart ass to his and talking smack to his villains. Um, Gwen Stacy is actually way better than Mary Jane. A more independent, strong, independent woman. She's able to, to put her own in a fight and everything. Um, the whole thing with Parker's parents, especially when you get to the new one we're, we're about to talk about, it could have just been scrapped all together. But, I mean, it's an interesting way to show what happened to his parents since he lived with his uncle and aunt. Um, I thought the aunt, uncle and aunt in this one were a little bit better, although I missed the Aunt May from the original Sam Raimi films, but Sally Fields does a good job. Um, and overall, it's good. And and uh, the one thing, and I really liked how the suit was done. That was the best part was the suit was actually, they showed you pretty much how you can make a Spider-Man costume. And, uh, you know, out of whatever. But, uh, yeah, I liked The Amazing Spider-Man. It was uh, way better than 3 bottle by far. Um, and it was just, it was a fun ride. It was a nice way to reboot the series. Um, so I'd give that one, again, another 8. So about the same par as Spider-Man 2. But now we move on to, I've talked seven minutes in front of the camera about the first four movies. Now we move on to the second part of the reboot, which is The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And uh, to sum it up in a nutshell, it was alright. I mean, I didn't, like, a lot of people are like 50-50 on this one. They're saying it's basically the Man of Steel of Marvel movies. And I can see why, like, people love it, people hate it. I thought it was just okay, it was alright, and it was a fun kitty Spider-Man movie. Um, so, just to get into a quick plot, uh, Spider-Man is chills, trying to figure out what happened to his parents, and he does eventually find out. There's uh, three villains, Rhino, who is only in the beginning and the end. You have Electro, who is the basic main villain, and he's pretty much Edward Nigma from Batman Forever. And you have the Green Goblin, which is shoehorned in the last minute, but I didn't mind. Um, I thought, like, it was a nice way to introduce the Green Goblin into the series. And, um, you know, the chemistry between Peter and Emma Stone or Gwen Stacy is really good. And it's um, it's a fun ride. It's a really fun um, adventure ride thing that... Um, it's, it's a fun Spider-Man movie. It's a fun, kid-friendly Spider-Man movie. Now, if I were to sum it up, it's basically, I like to consider it a Joel Schumacher Spider-Man. Meaning that it's very, it's very much like Batman Forever in a way, or Bat and even a little bit of Batman and Robin. Where it's like, you know, it's a little more fun and lighthearted for the kids. Um, you've got Electro, who I've said before, is like Ed literally Edward Nigma from Batman Forever. Um, although, I'll, though, I mean, the one thing I can nitpick is, like, the design of Electro is, like, too much like Dr. Manhattan or even Mr. Freeze <laughs> from Batman and Robin. But, um, I mean, 
he's Mr. Freeze, um, you got, you know, and, and the, the way, the reason I say it's very Schumacher-ish is because the lighting is the same as a Joel Schumacher Batman movie, uh, the costumes are about the same, except minus the bat nip, the spider nipples, that would be so awkward if they just shot, oh, I'm thinking really bad, um, but it's, it feels like a Schumacher movie, almost, um, the second one. Now, I mean, the things I liked, um, I liked Peter and uh, Emma Stone's chemistry. I keep calling her, I have to call her Greta. I like their chemistry. I like the jokes. They're fun. They're entertaining. Um, I did like a little bit how dark, it got a little bit darker than the first one. Um, I did like Harry Osborn, the chemistry between them two, although I do honestly miss James Franco's Harry Osborn. Um, and, uh, I mean, like, the action's great. I mean, like, when Spider-Man's flying around, like people said, you feel like he's Spider-Man. You feel like you're flying with him, and it's really fun. And he, I didn't see it in 3D. I saw it in 2D, and even in 2D, I felt like I was flying with Spider-Man. It was really fun. Um, the Rhino, I actually, like, a lot of people have a problem, like, the Rhino's only at the beginning and the end. I didn't mind that. I thought, you know, he was a good side villain. You know, a little extra villain that Spider-Man would fight for, like, filler areas and stuff. Um, Spider-Man was really good. Again, Andrew Garfield really pulls off uh, a perfect, nice, smart-ass, grown-up Peter Parker. Um, and, uh, yeah, overall, I mean, like, and the whole government conspiracy with Oscorp and everything was interesting. And I like how they're kind of setting up for the Sinister Six movie, which is probably going to be in the third one. Um, but as far as we know, for the Sinister Six, we have, like, four so far out of six. We have... Um, basically Green Goblin, Harry Osborn, and from what we saw in, in the other areas, we have, um, Dr. Octopus, Vulture, and the Rhino. So those are our basic start of the four villains, but it makes me wonder who they're gonna put in for, um, the last two spots in the villain category. Um, I wouldn't go with Hobgoblin because, like, you already got Green Goblin. Although it would be cool to see him. And I would not put Venom or Carnage. Save those for, like, the last movie. Um, I'm trying to think out of Spider-Man's villain. Maybe, oh, put Mysterio in there. I want to see Mysterio in this, in this Spider-Man movies, because we've never seen him before. Um, I can do Sandman again. I could see that happening again. That would be fun. But, yeah, you could do those uh, for the six villains. Um, and then... Now, let's just get to the quick stuff that I just kind of didn't like, and like, kind of little nitpicks. First of all, when the movie opens, Spider-Man has a brand new suit, just hands down new suit. Now, usual movies, like if you look back at The Dark Knight, um, Batman had his original suit from Batman Begins, but then he said he needs a new suit, and he does get a new suit, and they explain how that works. I could have wished that we could have gotten a little cut to what ha like a little beginner to the start of it where we see him in the old suit and then he says, okay, I need, and maybe the suit gets shredded and he gets a new suit. I would have liked to see that. In, in the beginning, he's just, he's got a new suit and that was just, uh, I could have gone with a little explanation on why he gets a new costume, but that's a small nitpick. Um, I, again, I didn't, I was kind of a little bit just kind of, bother that they just stole from, like, Batman Forever with the Edward Nygma thing with Electro. And, um, oh, the one thing, okay, I'll be honest, the one thing I didn't like was the new Green Goblin design. I mean, I love the Willem Dafoe Green Goblin costume, and I wish they could have kept that. I mean, I don't mind the suit in total, but the makeup and everything, it's all cool and everything, but I would have gone with a mask. I would have just liked to see a Green Goblin mask or a hat or some kind um, I'm trying to think what else I just, I, I mean, there were a few nitpicks, um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I mean, it felt also, like, kind of like, it, like, a, like, it's kind of like, you know, there's a lot of scenes where Spider-Man's not even in there, I'm like, just get to the Spider-Man again, I just, because it, it is a good paced movie, like, they have, you cut to Spider-Man doing something, then you cut to the heroes, then you go back to Spider-Man, and I wish there was a little bit more Spider-Man, um, uh, but I'm trying to think what else I just didn't like. Um, I didn't like how they did what I like to call the Dark Knight girlfriend cliche, and that's where the girlfriend dies in the second movie. I thought that was a little bit cliched, and you're just, and uh, yes, it happens in the comics, but you kind of waited until, like, part three to do that or something. Um, but yeah, overall, um, trying to think, but like, what other, what did I, what else did I like? I did like the little joke with the Spider-Man theme, theme on the ring, on his ringtone. 
Um, I liked how it was all shot in New York, which was great. New York's really well photographed in this movie. I was unbelievably amazed by the New York photograph photography in this movie. Um, the music, um, here, here's the thing with the music. Like, the first film, it was James Newton Howard who did the score. But then in this one, it's Hans Zimmer, and honestly, guys, I'm getting sick of Hans Zimmer doing the score for everything now. Like, it's always the same. Like, back in the, no like, 90s Hans Zimmer, like, 90s to mid-thousands Hans Zimmer, he came out with some great themes. He did the score of The Lion King, which was amazing. He did the Pirates of the Caribbean theme, Muppet Treasure Island, and he did these amazing themes to all his movies, and now every single time he does a movie, it's... And I'm so sick of that. I'm so freaking sick of them doing that in those, um, in, in a score. Like, go back to doing actual good themes in your score. I mean, I like this, I mean, I like the songs that are playing throughout. Like, um, what's that song, that creepy song that has electro, his basic theme. I want to down, I want to get that now and download it. But uh, I like that. But, um, I mean, the action sequences were good. But overall... Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2, um, it was a fun ride, um, I mean, would I say it's the best Spider-Man movie? Uh, I'd put it at maybe number three on, like, my top out of the movies that made five, I'd put it at number three, the other two being Spider-Man 2 and The Amazing Spider-Man. Um, I mean, it's, I, it's, it's, uh, the action scenes are definitely improved. They are the best thing in the movie, and this is the best Spider-Man in terms of action and effects and so on. Um, but overall, it's just, it's alright. It's not, it's not good, it's not bad. I mean, I didn't hate it as a lot of people, other people said they hated it. But, uh, I thought it was okay, and it was a fun, it's a fun thing to take your kids to. The kids will really like it. If they love Spider-Man, they're gonna love this. But... Overall, I'd give it a, about a 7 out of 10. It was just alright, overall. Just all, it's an okay, kid-friendly, fun, Joel Schumacher-esque Spider-Man movie. But, uh, yeah, that's it for this review. So, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and record now to Maleficent, which I also just saw. And, um, yeah, um, so that's it for this review. So, rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next review. Take care.